You're listening to Ramadan Reflections by Mufti Hussein Kamani. This summer, Mufti Hussein will be teaching the Hadith Intensive. Students will study the different methods of compilation and preservation of a Hadith. The major role female scholars have played in Hadith preservation, the biography of famous Hadith narrators, as well as different Hadith collections and excerpts from famous Hadith texts like Sahih al-Bukhari. For more information, visit hadithintensive.com. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah wa kafa wa salamun ala ibadihi al-lazhi astafa. Khususun ala Sayyidi Rasuli wa Khatam al-Anbiya wa ala alihi al-Askiya wa ashabihi al-Atqiya amma ba'd. Over the past few days, we've been talking about building a bond with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We talked about the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We talked about how every person is given an opportunity by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, an opportunity for change. We also talked about how it is our responsibility to take that step to turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, Many a times the thing that holds us back from turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what we're currently facing in our life. And it kind of weighs us down, it pulls us down. Every time we face a difficulty and a calamity in life, the first thought that pops into our mind is that I am disliked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is punishing me for X, Y, and Z sin. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is punishing me. And when we see pain across the world, Muslim lands being bombed, innocent human beings being killed, we think to ourselves that why isn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helping the believers? Don't we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Don't we make sajda to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We are the ones who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should show His mercy to. So I wanted to start off by flipping the paradigm with the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, changing that mindset, that punishment Difficulty and calamity equals to punishment. We need to flip that. The Prophet wasallam said in one hadith, out of all of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests those people the most who He loves the most. And out of all of the creation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved the prophets the most, therefore they were tested most by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And out of all prophets, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved our Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the most. Hence, without doubt, he was tested most by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So rather than viewing afflictions and calamity as a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to start viewing it again as an opportunity. An opportunity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us. Some of us think that there will probably be a day in our life that I'll be free and the world will be free of pain. That probably won't happen. Because somewhere or the other, there is someone who says, La ilaha illallah, and that person is being tested for the price of their statement. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the opening verses of Surah Al Ankabut, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alif Lam Mim. Ahasiba al nasu an yutraku an yakulu amanna wa humla yuftanun, wala kat fatanna ladina min kablihim, fala yalamanna lahu ladina sadaku, wala yalamanna kadibin. Does mankind think? That simply by saying, La ilaha illallah, they won't be tested by Allah. Any person that came before who made a similar statement was also tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can test them and prove who is truthful in their statement and whose words are empty. We're always searching for that perfect time when my life gets perfect, that's when I'll give sadaqah. When my life gets perfect, that's when I'll go to the masjid. When everything in my life settles down and I don't have any pain or any worries, that's the day I'll go for hajj. That's the day I'll start focusing on my tahajjud salah. That day probably won't come. You know, when I was younger, I used to go to an elementary school where probably 90 to 95% were Caucasian Americans, white Americans. And being a minority there, being in, you know, from the subcontinent, Indian Pakistani kid, everyone looked at us and they would laugh and joke at us. The how, look at that weirdo, look at that guy. They used to call me Dalsim when I was young. If you guys played Street Fighter, you'll know that reference. So they used to mock us, and I used to think to myself, <laughs> I was skinny too, so it kind of fit very perfectly. So people used to mock us, and I used to think to myself, man, I'm in kindergarten, that's why they're mocking me. Right? When I get to first grade, they're going to stop mocking me. When I got into first grade, day one, everyone was introducing themselves. They asked me, what's your name? I said, Hussein. So one said, Saddam Hussein? Now they're, oh, first grade, there we go. <laughs> Got into second grade. They asked me, hey, what's your name on day one? I said, Hussein. Someone said, insane Hussein? And there goes second grade right there. 
And I kept waiting for a day in my, a year in my, in, my, in my schooling that, you know, things would get better. I thought when I get to middle school, it'll get better. I thought when I get to high school, I'll get to sit at the back of the bus and things will get cooler then. Then I thought, you know what, when I get to college, it'll get better. After you graduate from college, you tell yourself, when I get a job, things are going to get better. Then when you get a job, you realize every uncle and auntie are asking you, Shadi kabe? Dulan kabari? When are you getting married? After you get married, everyone asks you, Bache kabare? Like make us, your grand, make us grandparents too. That pressure comes. You have children, now you have to take care of those children. Schooling, you guys know what I'm talking about. Getting them through school, getting, making sure that they get to college, housing, car, paying off your own house, paying off your own car, taking care of your business. You know, your business goes up and down in waves, you're paying all that off. By the time you've taken care of all this stuff, you think to yourself, now I'm gonna retire, but at that point half of the limbs in your body aren't working anymore, right? And that's when you realize that there is no time like now. Don't let shaitan turn you away and say you're too busy. It's a lie. Anyone that says they're too busy and they don't have time for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has lost sight of their priorities. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing you, again, He's giving you an opportunity for you to grow. Wow, why and how? Don't we know the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us, for every calamity we face, our sins are washed away. Allah is washing our sins away even though we turn away from Him. Don't we know that the Prophet ﷺ said to us that the people who face calamity and they say, إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ What's after that? أُولَٰئِكَ عَلَيْهِمْ صَلَوَاتٌ مِّن رَبِّهِمْ وَرَحْمَةٌ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُهْتَدُونَ that those who face calamity and they focus and they say this calamity is not from shaitan, this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala testing me whether I can remain firm and patient at this time of difficulty, whether I can continue to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in return, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send His mercy upon you. In return, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide you. Do we not remember the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam telling us again and again in the hadith, he walks past the family of Yasir. They're being tortured, they're gonna, their lives will be taken very soon. The Prophet ﷺ doesn't do some abracadabra and get them out of the difficulty. He knows they're being tested by Allah, not because of a sin they committed, actually because they're being tested for the value of their faith. And the Prophet ﷺ walks past them and says, صَبْرًا يَا آلَ يَاسِرْ فَإِنَّ مَوْعِدَكُمُ الْجَنَّةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to reward you. Your, desti- your end destination will be Jannah. When you're being tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you an opportunity to find your weakness. Think about this. If we didn't go through calamity and difficulties in our life, whether it was the tension of a job interview or a college interview or whatever it was, if we didn't have our small ups and downs in life, how many of us would even stand up for tahajjud salah one night in our life? How many of us would actually turn to Allah and not only call Allah with our mouth, but yearn for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's acceptance from deep within our hearts? Do we not see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there was a time in the Prophet's life where he was broken. He was very sad. The people of Makkah Mukarramah said certain things to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that just tore him up internally. And, the Prophet, and they said to the Prophet of Allah, your Lord is angry at you. Your Lord is punishing you. Your Lord is going to abandon you. And these were statements that hurt the Prophet. He was an orphan. Maybe he had an experience of being abandoned. And he felt really sad that what if, you know, what if, what if, these people were saying these things. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He cheers up the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with a beautiful surah of the Qur'an. He says to him, وَالضُّحَا وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا سَجَى By the rising of the sun and the setting of the night. This is the cycle of life. Some days the sun is out and everything is beautiful. You wake up thinking you're, con- you're going to conquer the day. And then some days they're so dark, they're so dark, وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا سَجَى You wonder to yourself whether there is light or not at the end of the tunnel. Sometimes the difficulties are so long, they're so heavy, you feel like your shoulders don't have the ability to carry this burden anymore. But remember Allah said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَالضُّحَا وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا سَجَى Or as, as Allah says in another place, وَتِلْكَ الْأَيَّامِ نُدَاوِلُهَا بَيْنَ النَّاسِ Some days are good, some days are difficult upon you. You wake up one some day smiling and energetic, and other days you wake up, you realize that this is not going to be the best of your life. But however, remember, مَا وَدَّعَكَ رَبُّكَ وَمَا قَلَى whether good or bad, your Allah has not abandoned you. وَمَا قَلَى أَيْ وَمَا غَذِبَ He is not angry upon you. وَلَلْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنَ الْأُولَى Be patient. What Allah has stored for you in the hereafter is much better than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for you right now. وَلَسَوْفُ يُعْتِيكَ رَبُّكَ فَتَرْضَى Continue to believe in Allah subhanahu wa 
ta'ala. Don't let the world tell you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is punishing you. Don't let anyone tell you your Lord is angry at you. As long as you have your peace with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You've made dua to Allah. You've made tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are regular and repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are at peace with Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always take care of you. And your Lord will give you such a reward in the hereafter that, you will bring a, that He will bring a smile to your face. A person when he sees the reward that he will be given in return of a small difficulty in the world, he will say, Ya Allah, only if you had not taken me out of any of my difficulties in the world. I found it all today. Alam yajidika yatiman fa'awa. Allah then reminds the Prophet, you are a survivor. And I say this to every one of you. Each and every one of you, tell me that's not true. That you haven't already faced great difficulties in your life. You pulled through them, what makes you think you're not going to pull through this one? Yes or no? Can we agree on that? Alam yajidka yatiman fa'awa. Wa wajadka dhalan fahada. Wa wajadka a'ilan fa'aghna. Every time you hit a wall, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pick you up. Fa'amma al-yatima fala takhar. Now be a contributor to those who are struggling like you were struggling yesterday. وَأَمَّا السَّائِلَ فَلَا تَنْهَرْ And at the end of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the most beautiful advice. وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثْ Don't be negative about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't say bad things. Don't let shaitan clog your mind. Be positive. Think of all of the great things that we have. Think how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us. We have life. We have family. We're in a masjid. We're in an air-conditioned masjid. We're sitting here in so much peace and comfort. We aren't worried about someone walking through those doors and hitting us or killing us or shooting us. We live in peace. <laughs> and right before that, what does Allah say? Your responsibility when Allah gives you prosperity, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you security, is that you submit yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How much more rizq do you want from your Lord? You asked, He gave you. How much more rizq do you want? You asked him for safety, he gave you. How much more safety do you want from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before we actually say that enough rizq, enough safety, now it's time for me, to, for, for me to fulfill my promise. And my promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was my sajda. My promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was my dua. My promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was my dhikr. It's our turn to fulfill the promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He never went against his promise. In Allah la yukhliful mi'ad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never goes against His promise. It's just us, the human beings, we constantly forget, forget, forget. Every time you face a difficulty in life, immediately make istighfar to Allah. Because yes, it is possible. Sometimes it does happen. A person does a sin, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests that person for the sin in the dunya, so they are free of the burden in the hereafter. وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ Sometimes what you face in the world is a result of what you do. But however, the ayah doesn't end there. فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ That's not the end of the ayah. What's after that? وَيَعْفُ عَنْ كَثِيرٌ Your Lord forgives everything. Everything, most of it's forgiven. Small little things here and there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put you through a little difficulty. Put you through a little difficulty there. But remember when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts you through those difficulties, it's your opportunity to grow spiritually. It's your opportunity to come above. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أَوَّلُ مَن يُدْعَى إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ the first group of people to be called to the gates of Jannah. Those who praised Allah in the times of difficulty and also in the time of ease. The other, today, I think it was today or yesterday, one of my kids came to me, he got his finger stuck somewhere. He was crying and I said, say Alhamdulillah. He said, Abba, this is not time for Alhamdulillah, this is time for Astaghfirullah. <laughs> he said, this is not time for? <laughs> Alhamdulillah. This is time for? Astaghfirullah. I said, no, Alhamdulillah. Every time is a time for Alhamdulillah. الَّذِينَ يَحْمُدُونَ اللَّهَ فِي السَّرَّاءِ Those who praise Allah at times of joy, what? وَالضَّرَّاء And those who praise Allah at the time of difficulty, always Alhamdulillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mudabbir al-umur. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have sabr, we have shukr. We build our iman. And in this difficulty, in these calamities, we will find great, great, great reward. There are so many stories that can be shared. So many ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I was just reading one narration before I came up here. Beautiful hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, narrated by Asma bin Abi Hakima. He says, "Baka Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam." One day, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was crying, and he cried so much. So I asked the Messenger of Allah, "Ma abkaka? Why are you crying?" So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "I am thinking of the times before the Day of Judgment." I am thinking of the times before the Day of Judgment. 
and the difficulties that people will face in that era. And what they will face before the times of the Day of Judgment. The one who is patient in those times, he will come before Allah on the Day of Judgment, and that person will have the reward of two martyrs. Two people who give their life for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So know that for a believer, there is opportunity everywhere. When you are obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the times of ease, and you do shukr to Allah, that's your opportunity there to earn Jannah. And then when you're tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, once again, you are patient and you are given Jannah by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'll close with one hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, narrated by Imam Ibn Majah rahmatullahi alayhi in his sunan, that one time a lady came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and she was crying. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked her, why are you crying? She said, O Messenger of Allah, my heart is broken. My child left me. She was pregnant, she had a miscarriage. And you can imagine how painful this was for her. She cried and cried and cried. The Prophet ﷺ said to her, Should I not tell you something today that will bring joy to you? She said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, what can bring joy after losing your child? Go and ask someone who's lost a child. Sometimes when they smile amongst people, they're putting it on because they don't have the joy to smile anymore. This mother was heartbroken. And the Prophet ﷺ says, On the day of judgment, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call you forward, and you are standing in front of Allah, and your hisab will just start. A small little infant will come and say, Ya Allah, not this lady. She is my mother. She left me in the dunya. We've been away from each other for too long. You've given me Jannah, and she's coming with me. And that child, that small infant, will drag the mother by the umbilical cord into Jannah, inshaAllah, Aziz. In one narration, the father was standing, the, was sta the father was standing there. He said, a Messenger of Allah, what about? What about me? She gets Jannah, what about me? So the Prophet ﷺ said in another narration, he will drag the mother by the umbilical cord and hold his father by the finger. And he will say, my parents, come with me into Jannah. This reward is for the people who have sabr, who trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Trust isn't walking outside and seeing a Ferrari and saying, oh, the Imam came in a Ferrari. I didn't come in a Ferrari. <laughs> trust is for me to say, guys, I might have come in a Ferrari. And you guys say, sadaqt. Anta sadiq, anta lameen. That you're right. That's why you trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your Allah will never will bad for you. Your Allah will never put you in a place that you cannot handle. Your Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never put you in a situation. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already planned the exit strategy for you too. All you have to do is trust Allah. وَمَن يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُ Whoever relies on Allah, Allah will take care of them. Inna Allah baligh wa amri. Allah will always fulfill His affairs and His matters. Qad jaal Allahu li kulli shayin qadra. For everything, there is a certain framework, a certain time. Once that time is fulfilled, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will open the doors, just as He was the one who closed the doors. We pray that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala opens our doors for us, opens our hearts for us, opens the gates of Jannatul for those for us all, and that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gives us the greatest and highest reward and the highest ranks for the difficulty and calamity. Ya Allah, do not test us with that which we are not capable of. Ya Allah, do not test us with that which will take our iman out of our heart. Ya Allah, every difficulty you put us in, put us there so we can handle with it. And Ya Allah, so we can come closer to you. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.